And we're live for one more Frugal Health podcast. I'm really, really thrilled and excited, happy to share with you Dr. Aris Latan, the one of my main inspirations to go raw like tw two decades ago. Yes, I have been raw for 17 years and he have, have been raw for more years than I'm actually alive. So <laughs> it's, it's actually a pleasure and a, a true inspiration. And I cannot even describe in words how much I admire him and how much he inspires me. So without the lo more the longings, uh, Aris, please introduce yourself a little bit and what got you into raw foods, actually? <laughs> well, uh, well, basically, I am uh, recognized as the father of ethical gourmet raw food cuisine uh, in the world. And this is based on the Oxford Encyclopedia of Food and Drink their 2004 edition when they did an, uh, an expose on the entire history of vegetarianism, starting from, uh, I don't know, somebody back there, you know, Pythagoras or one of those guys. And uh, when they came up to the modern era after going through, you know, all of the, the, big, the big heads in the raw food movement, well, in the vegetarian movement, period, from beginning of history, uh, up until today, the modern time. And they acclaimed me uh, since at the time, you know, I was, I'll actually <laughs> to come to think of it, of all the people they spoke about in the, that encyclopedia, I'm the only one that's, uh, that's alive, even since then, still, you know, we're talking 20 years ago, you know, <laughs> so, uh, So it's an maybe, honor. Maybe genetics, maybe lifestyle. You know, people will claim it's like uh, it's a uh, look. It it, it 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 doesn't matter what it is, but people who are naysayers of me, I always ask them to let let's facts speak clearer than words. Put your medical report on the table next to mine's, and let's see what it is. <laughs> You know, because so many people who are not, you know, pretty much uh, conscious of the power of fresh living plant foods, they may say, yes, genetics. Come on, it is not genetics because everybody in my family, I'm the first one that got to this level. And uh, in my generation, you know, of uh, cousins and all the others in my age bracket, of about 60 of us, I am think uh, at 76, I am one of the last 10 standing, you know, so, uh, so a great percentage of my genetics have proven that, you know, their food had been their, down, their demise. Because for me now, it is now 47 years of no, not eating any cooked foods, as you know it, And uh, 53 years of not partaking of anything from the animal kingdom. No pus, no secretion, no honey or anything of that nature. No chicken, no goat, no fish, no birds, you name it. And uh, I know that the food is a major part because I'm not sick. 2020 vision right now. My brain is expanding. No Alzheimer's, no forgetfulness. And... Uh, Hey, even my B12 factor, I'm, I'm B12 deficient, according to, you know, the Oxford, well, not the Oxford, let's say the uh, Harvard University Medical Research, you know, institution. I've hacked their system because even though I've not partaken of animals and have not taken any B12 supplements in 53 years, I show no symptoms of B12 deficiency. I do have the deficiency based on how they figure that out, but I don't show the symptoms. So what am I doing that has hacked their system? It's definitely not genetics. So let's come on home and, uh, you know, give me a little more credit. You know, I've been honored to, to, to also to receive an honorary doctorate degree 
for my work in sun-fired food science. And furthermore, show me someone else that has invented an entire cuisine. I'm an inventor. I'm an innovator. I have come up with an entire cuisine from soups to nuts, from A to Z. So come on now, at my age and not sick, 2020 vision and a, a, a very fertile brain still. Yes. And this also shows my footprint. How did I get here? Let's talk about the 1960s, the year of the revolution. I got into this as a revolutionary, not as someone trying to save the planet, trying to save no animals other than myself as an, a human being, a very intense uh, endangered species. Humans today are very endangered. You know, we're, we're sick like never before. And with all these battalions of medical systems and institutions and soldiers on the front line, back line, first responders, or whatever you want to call them, humanity is sicker than ever. And what I figured out in the 60s, that food as we know it today is a weapon. And I decided not to shoot myself in the mouth with bad food, sad diet, the standard American diet. So it's actually here sad. I am. It's the, the diet is actually sad. And I seen the guy in person uh, uh, a few times already. I, I, once I was really impressed. I remember like, like it was yesterday, Adis had a, a, was teaching a culinary course in Rio de Janeiro. He was staying in my place. And like 6, p 6 p.m., I was like, aren't you, having, aren't you going to have dinner? And he was like, no, man, no, man. I cook food for people the whole year, man. So I, when I can, I just take a fast. And he stayed like uncooking the food until what? 3 p.m. or something like that. He went to sleep, took like a couple hours of sleep, and then went to the culinary course, taught the course from 8, p 8, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. And then he was still pretty vital, awakened, you know, like alive, uh, clear thinking, calm. And he probably drink a few juices, ju uh, a few cups of juices during the whole day. He was impressive. Like for, uh, he was probably 71 back then, I, I, 70, mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly the date. It was like six to seven years ago, but it was quite impressive to see someone from that age stay the whole night awakened, like uh, awake, uh, cooking, uncooking, and then to teach the whole day and be chill, you know, like it was impressive. Well, you know, it's, you know, one of my biggest uh, sayings is it is not the food in your life, but the life in your food that nourishes. And if we eat in the food that our body was designed to function at optimal peak on, we don't need much because, you know, a little bit goes a long way. I run on sugar. I run on fructose, you know. So as long as I'm not corrupting my system and mixing uh, my fructose <laughs> with sucrose, then I can run pretty much indefinite on this, this, this minimally charged battery, you know. So, uh, hey, life moves forward, and I'm happy to be a part of it, and I'm happy to be still a part of the revolution. So it's all about defending our life, protecting our lives, taking ownership and not really destroying this wonderful gift, this wonderful blessing that we call life. I'm just another heavenly body out here in the universe, well connected to the rest of the universe. Wise, wise words, wise man. And uh, I get even emotion and, um, emotional because... I seen it uh, 17 years ago. I started like a, a 24 day water fast. I, I, I started living on fruit 17 years ago and I had the same dream to, to be the revolution, to share with the world what nobody can see it. But it, it, it's sad, but it's also a, a thing that we must do because we can see it. So it's the, the, uh, a Pl Plato's cavern, it's the myth of the Plato's cavern, the matrix itself, what we are living nowadays, so sad. But continue on, uh, tell, tell us about it. 
like back then how did you got how did you got into it well you know we're talking you know uh wow <laughs> 1968 you know 67 college campus usa you know uh new york <laughs> city <laughs> and uh out in the suburbs uh meeting up with the hippies you know the uh vietnam war movement hell no we won't go the flower power uh back to the land organic and the black power movement you know the conversion of of these the, the, the impact of the 60s well not to speak about also all of the revolutions around the world during that time you know the the the, the radicals they would call certain people for sitting in in the college university taking over the president's office demanding you know that we have good clean food in our cafeteria as students So with that young, you know, ready mind, ready to learn, ready to take on the world, you know, this is how I got into it, just being wise, being intelligent, getting what I went into school for, you know, <laughs> went to get some some ammunition to really uh take charge, take ownership and command this planet. You know, they they've taken the thing off course. They have taken it off course, you know, greed and whatever else you want to call it but they have really really destroyed our food basket have us eating foodless foods i mean we got to be fools to be eating foodless foods and they make it seem like something normal and the biggest abnormality let's forget about the animal products we know we're not animal eaters by nature we are not carnivores by nature so that that's that's a fact and that's given for 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 years We've been on this planet at least a million years based on recorded history and for many years hundreds of thousands of years prior to the advent of fire we never ate animals we never had that kind of relationship with animals we did not even domesticate them we don't want to make them dumb like us <laughs> you know so this whole new culture this old new civilization this industrial revolution and all the stuff that is upon us today you know i mean we don't even have to go back too far One of the most corrupt group of foods right now, you know, besides the animal products, is these complex carbohydrates. Why do they call these foods complex? Because they're complicated. And what are these types of carbohydrates as opposed to the fructose, the fruit sugar? These are starches. Starches. Starches, grains, beans, and deep roots. And you could check your authority right now. Go online and and just ask any of your search engine to tell you about how long did human beings started eating corn how long ago we started eating potatoes how long ago since we started eating rice all right yes macaroni pasta all of these things you would see that nowhere in any of the authority that we accept today these online you know search engines even places like wikipedia you ask them about corn this is less than 10,000 years ago we've been eating corn potatoes all these great potatoes that we brought up the the incas you know all these folks up in peru 50 or 10,000 different varieties of of potato that's just been less than 10,000 years ago beans grains and roots those are not food for human consumption we cannot digest them we cannot convert them into sugar effectively and what happens it makes it very difficult for us to enjoy the sugar that our body runs on fruits so this is one of the things that i have seen clearly plainly with my eyes and you know all of you that are eating starches out now out there right now complex carbohydrate can you enjoy eating those raw without cooking them can you can you eat raw beans and enjoy it Can you eat raw grains and enjoy them? Can you eat raw potatoes and enjoy them? No. No. You 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 boil them and pump them up with water trying to hydrate them. You cannot even you cannot enjoy none of these dried foods. Period. So your whole attempt to pump them up with water, like say a green a green banana, that's another complex carbohydrate, unripened fruit. You boil it in water trying to really ripen it but what did you do you pump water into it 
you make it tender, you made it edible, but it's still a complex carbohydrate. You did not ripen it. You did not turn it into sugar. And who does that? The greatest chef of all, the sun. That's why the cuisine that we practice, that we promote, that I invented, we call it sun-fired foods. Because it is cooked food, but it's cooked by the sun. The growing period is the cooking process. So right now, I'm sitting on the mango tree, okay? I'm on the mango tree, you know? I'm not waiting for lunch. Because <laughs> you think, okay, this guy is a fruitarian. He's hanging out at the mango tree. It's lunchtime. He's waiting for a ripe mango to fall out of the sky and bless him. <laughs> no, no I, 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 I got a little bit more, you know, uh, modernity in me, you know? <laughs> So, so no, I climb mango trees. I climb coconut trees. So I climb the tree and go grab my mango, you know, because I want it right off of the tree. I want it straight out of the of of, of, of the uh, the pot, if I may. The mango tree is the pot, and the sun <laughs> the sun rays are cooking my mango. They're cooking my bananas, my pineapples, my my avo avocados, the coconuts, the cherries, the grapes, the the apples. It cooks for everybody on the planet. So I'm not a chef. Yeah, I can chef around, you know. I can take the sun's creation and turn it into art, edible art, and make it, you know, acceptable as a world-class cuisine. So I eat cooked food, cooked by the sun, the greatest chef of all. <laughs> It's quite impressive because <laughs> the, the longer we live this lifestyle, our brains get more... I, I feel getting better every year. Like I, oh, I think better. I feel getting better. My brain works better at 40 than it was than worked at 20. And, and it's like I see you, right? You speaking. You you're clear of mind. You create like uh, we get these visions of the whole, uh, you know, like nature of things. But people with cooking cooking food, eating the usual fare, they cannot see it. They well, the cannot... thing is that the, 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 their channels are clogged up. You know, yeah. all the starch, all the grease between the fat and, 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 and the starch, one of them is going to crystallize. That fat is going to crystallize. Call it wax, air wax or whatever you want to call it. And the starch is going to calcify. It's going to dry out in your system like cement. So that blocks your whole circulatory system. My brain is juicy. It's full of blood. <laughs> It's full of blood and clean, vibrant blood. So my thoughts are crystal clear. As a matter of fact, I look at my brain as, as, as a crystal ball. And it looks like, as you know, the, the older I get, the wiser I become, the more polished and the more illuminative this crystal ball is. I can see clearly now. I've been seeing clearly for a good while. And I think I can see clearly forever. I am here, you know, got my whole horizon into perspective. You know, that's why, you know, I'm out here with nature. I'm living the life, enjoying the planet as it is, because I know that my connection to the rest of the universe is through these plants, is through these foods. So that's why now 53 years, strictly all plant food. And I, I don't get into the modern linguistic pit, pitfalls. I don't eat plant-based. That's, that's a very difficult pitfall. Because when you talk in plant-based, I question what the heck is on the base? What are you adding to your plants? What are they adding? Na nanoparticles? GMO? Okay, fertilizers? Chemicals? What is it that they're adding on the plant base? So I, I am a plant food eater, period. I just don't eat the base and have it laced with all this other corrupted stuff based on profit and greed. No, we are here. And also, you know, when it comes to meat, we've been here before meat. So tell me, Addis. Now, another day, uh, we, we got now a new setup. So changing subjects, right? Uh, what, a, uh, what actually you eat in a day-to-day -day basis and why? Okay. Well, you know, my, my all-time favorite is this fruit here. You know, this is, uh, 
this is a load of electrolytes, the water of the young coconut. I, I go through a dozen of these a day. And each one, each one have about a glass, you know, on average. So we're talking six glasses of coconut water per day, minimum. Some days I'm up to 12 glasses, you know, really. Uh, some days it's just unlimited because I may be fasting, you know, just on liquids, you know. But uh, the reason why, <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the food on the planet that has more electrolytes than anything else around, period. So we're talking electrical current. You know, you know how today you got to charge up your phone, you got to charge up everything, everything got... So, so I got to charge my body up. This is maximum fuel. This is power saw charge. You know, and, and it's like, uh, I get the perfect amount of sugar. I get minerals. There's vitamin in here. But the big key, the hydration, the water. And not just any water. We're talking top shelf, high quality water. Structured water, H3O. Structured by the plants a photosynthesis process with their relationship with the sunshine. So it's all about liquid sunshine, and this is it, you know. Anything other than this is more water, more high moisture, watermelons, mangoes, papayas, you name them, grapes, apples, peaches, pears. Yeah, let's get some lettuce in there and cucumbers and tomatoes and all these high moisture non-starchy vegetable fruits as well, you know, some green, light, leafy vegetables, things of that nature. And of course, you know, I, I get a dab of fat, you know, my avocados. And I cut these guys open. I get the young jelly, the fresh young jelly protein. Depend on the stage of maturity. It's pre-digested protein. Some are very tender, very subtle, very light, low fat, <laughs> you know, some are heavy hitters, hard, big fat. Those, these are the mature coconuts, those green or brown ones, the fuzzy guys, you know, those are mature. These are like maybe a year, two years on the tree. Those are probably like 10, 15, 20 years on the tree where they develop protein. So, but when I get into those, then I, I ask modern technology to bail me out, you know. So I, I would like ox them out, shell them, put them in, in my high-powered blender, grind them down, put, it, put the, the, the ground coconut meat into my sunfire juice and milk press bag, and I squeeze it out. What am I squeezing out? The creme de la creme the cream of cream, the coconut fat, the coconut protein, that rich, sweet, <laughs> delectable. I mean, forget, you know, uh, fat from milk, you know, cream, cheese, and all of this kind of pussy kind of stuff, you know, excrements, you know. This is like, the creme de la creme. And if you may, allow me to call it fresh coconut oil. But we don't go the oil route. We want the cream. We want it fresh. We don't want it, you know, that it's not spoilable. We want it that it would spoil within 24 hours if I don't digest it. Okay? This is what we're talking about. So what do I consume on a daily basis, a regular basis? a heavy load of fruits, high moisture fruits, some light green leafy vegetables, some degree of, of protein slash fat in there. And then a, a little sprinklings of microgreens and seaweed and, you know, a couple of those other stuff. But fresh is my middle name, <laughs> you know, call me Mr. Fresh, you know. If it's not fresh, 
then I might take a little powder of lucuma or maca, you know, a little pinch, drop it in something, you know. But that's about it, you know. I'm a fresh guy. I'm a fresh kid here. And it's all about sun-fired foods because I want to extract the three master food nutrients from my food. Sunshine, oxygen, and living water. So if those are not in it, I'm, you know, very, very careful as to how much I want to indulge in dry, dense, you know, calcifying, uh, plas plastified, you know, crystallized, you know, fat and starch. This is me, my life. And could you tell us a little bit more why you don't drink water? Because most people are like, wow, when I, when I go out, for example, to play tennis, like two or three hours in, the, in uh, the daily hot summer of like Rio de Janeiro, and I don't drink water around people, they're like, you know, they're quite impressed and they don't understand how like <laughs> I, I, I don't feel thirsty, right? So like... Uh, And I, I, I usually say that I'm doing an experiment and that it has been running for 17 years and that it's been working pretty well because I rarely, rarely drank, drank any glass of water like in 17 years. Maybe like doing a smoothie for somebody when I don't have a coconut uh, water or something like that. But it was like once in like months, right? So could you tell us how more like 47 years without drinking water or something like that, right? Uh, yeah, well, look, first we, I, I, you know, I, I beg, you know, excuse, but uh, I do speak English. And in the English language, this fruit is called a water coconut. <laughs> and also I indulge in water melon and water cress, which originates at the head of the spring. It filters the water. So why in the English language they put water in the front of these fruits these vegetables, and you're going to tell me if I'm consuming those, I am not drinking water? So excuse me. Uh, I don't know where you bought your education, but they sold you a bad deal. I do drink water, but my water has to come through a plant source. It has to be filtered by the plants, not by a man-made machine, a ionizer or a reverse osmosis something or, or, or alkalinized machine or distiller. Come on, they are trying to imitate the plant. At the very least, maybe I might need to use a limestone or something and put the water in there and let it just drip for a few months and let it get filtered. But all this other type of imitation fake filters that are being used, I don't want that kind of water. I still want my relationship with the rest of the universe. And my relationship with the rest of the universe is transmitted through the plant kingdom. I got to be plugged into the plants. I want living water. I want fresh water. I want water that at 70 degrees is going to spoil. It's going to get stink. It's going to grow moss. It may look murky. That's the kind of water I want. I'm a living being. I want life to sustain my life, not death some stagnant, empty, dead, faking, freaking water. All you get from that is hydration. That's all. That's all. I get hydration. I'm hydrated. This is what, I, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm looking for in water. So when I juice my pineapple, I'm not drinking pineapple juice. I think the, 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 these languages have got people confused. I'm drinking pineapple water. So once they introduce this word to call extracted water from fruits and vegetables, they call it juice, I think they, they, they confuse you. Languages are just so profound. I'm a linguist. I study linguistics. I know the power, the words, power of sound. So please, excuse me. I'm a, I have a master's degree in linguistics. I think I bought a, a, a good practice education. So don't tell me you know, this kind of stuff, and try to put me in a box. You know, I do drink water, but I do not drink dead, stagnant, 
bottled processed water. My water is bottled at the source. My watermelon comes in a watermelon bottle made by nature at the source, a 20, 30 pound watermelon that carries two gallons, hermetically sealed, that watermelon vine that holds, that got plugged in to an underground spring and, 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 and got spring water out of the earth that had inorganic minerals and process it with the help of the sun and turn those inorganic minerals into organic minerals that my body can absorb so I don't have to go and do the work of what the plants are doing for me. Boing! Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, but people just don't get it usually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but like, so... Okay, so your diet is based primarily on fruits and vegetables. That's that's what I I got it. That's right? it. And and you, you and you, you want a lot of uh, watery foods. I I I'm I'm the same. I learned with you back then with Doug Gren. Like the more watery foods, the more I feel better. Probably because of the caloric restriction, because of the nutrients. So I I, I always prefer to have a, a meal of watermelon than even bananas I, I i'm not saying bad about bananas i love bananas but i'm always feeling better with the more water the better for me mm -hmm. so uh but like what would you eat in a day like what would be a day of eating for you for example well uh wow you know i don't have a typical day realistically you know i I live on, on a certain vibratory level where I just, first of all, since my food is fresh, it's got to be something that's in season or that's readily, readily available, whether it's shipped from Morocco or from Turkey or Brazil. You know, that's fine. I'd rather that than something that, that's even locally grown that has no water. I'd rather an a, 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 a apple shipped from turkey than a potato grown around the corner from me, okay? <laughs> Please. I got a little more going for me than that kind of stuff. So my typical day is the fruits that are around, that are available. Right now, you know, being in Panama, on the Caribbean, in the tropical rainforest, pineapples are available year-round, ripen in the field. So I do a lot of pineapple juice. It's, it's my favorite these days, you know. Uh, you know, there's there's durian around. There's there's jackfruit. Dur durian? Yeah, you, durian. You we, got... we, we grow durian here. Oh yes. Wow. Yeah, nice. we have a permaculture fruit farm. Seventy varieties of exotic fruits. You know, uh, even acai. We have a couple of thousand acai trees on our farm. Nice. You, know, you, you should visit me nowadays. I have like more than 300 fruit trees on my yard. But no, I'm, I, I'm not managing to grow durian. I, I wish, <laughs> but I'm not managing to. <laughs> oh, yes. But, but I grow sapotes. Even uh, mamey sapote is growing well. I, it's not giving fruit yet, but green sapote, I, I don't know if you ever heard. It was new to me these days. Uh, I'm trying to grow as much uh, rare fruits uh, as I can, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's my staple, rare fruits, you know, that has become staple for me, you know. But, you know, we just went through a good avocado season. Oh, mangosteen, oh my goodness. That, that, of all the fruits on the planet, I, I would say that's my favorite. Really, mangosteen? Mangosteen, oh. yeah. Yeah, mangosteen. <laughs> oh, I love it, I love it. We had a damaged crop this year because, you know, there was a drought. During the actual rainy season, there was a drought. So uh, about 50% of the crop was, you know, kind of dried out. You know, it was, if you know mangosteen and how it grows, you know, you know, they're very sensitive, you know. So a, a dry spell, we found that, yeah, the, the, the trees f flourish, you know, lots of flowers, lots of blossoms everywhere, but no water coming, you know, to make them pop. And then by the time the water, the rain came, Boom, it's like thunders, like too much. <laughs> so a lot of them weren't like perfectly uh, cooked by the sun, 
you know, but we got, a, you know, like about 50 percent out of the, the whole harvest, you know, we're, we're good. So we're happy. You know, nature knows best, you know. <laughs> so uh, just for sure, you change from day to day, but just to give a, a people the idea, you, you drink a lot of pineapple juice in, in your usual day. And then what? Like and well, around, around noon? In the, in around these, noon? Days, these days, generally in the morning, I drink. I, I practically do, I would say, about 70%, 80% of my liquid consumption before 12 noon. So I follow the daylight dining system. You know, so between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. is when I do my consumption. So between 6 a.m. and 12 noon, it's, it's liquid coconut water, and primarily fruit juices. Then early afternoon, I may do some coconut milk, blend the coconut meat with, co with coconut water, press it out, or other nut milk, seed milk, pumpkin seed, almond seed, pili pili, you know, we get real exotic too, you know, when it comes to our nut milks, our seed milks, hemp seed milk. So I would get my liquid protein, uh, about one o'clock or so, because that's when my body can really process protein the best. And then uh, probably like by three o'clock, a couple of hours after that, I'm having my solid protein. And my solid protein could be avocado, could be a, a cheese, cashew cheese, pumpkin seed cheese, some kind of cultured, you know, processed plant seed protein uh, dish. And I would complement that with vegetables, primarily vegetable fruits, cucumber, tomatoes, you know, high moisture vegetables, celery, uh, sweet peppers, things of that nature, and some light greens, lettuce and that, that kind of stuff. And then uh, later on, late afternoon, say between five and six, then I would, I would hit a glass of vegetable juice, a glass or two of vegetable juice. Uh, coconut water, and maybe a light salad. But if not, if not a light salad, then I might be crunching on some apples or papaya. You know, easy digestible food. So by six o'clock, I'm I'm through. You know, with with my my dining, my daylight dining, because I'm looking forward. You know, to to hit the bed after dark. You know, at some you know early point, so I can be up by four a.m. Uh, to greet the sun before it really, you know, opens up the skies in my horizon. So, uh, yeah, heavy, high moisture fruit, light vegetables, and a good serving, 10% or so of protein. Nice, nice. And what about fasting? Because if, if I remember correctly, you always fast oh, once a year, for every day that you are alive, so for example, you are 75 now, so this year you fast for 75 days, right? Well, it was 76. I fasted 76 days this year, and uh, coming up for next year, I fast 77 days. And I usually would do this fast anywhere between like uh, late fall or sometime in the fall, from September 21st on, you know, to about March 21st, you know, late fall, winter, you know, within that time block. So I'm looking forward to my 77 days of fasting coming up. And I think I might push the button early this year because this has been a very, very, very intense year for me. You know, lots of structuring, you know, heavy physical moving and maneuvering and setting. You know, we just had to relocate. Well, not relocate, but reset from the farm. We're on a 700-acre permaculture fruit farm, but there's a highway coming through the farm, eminent domain. That's how our governments operate, you know. So, uh, so right now, you know, the, the road that we use to get to the farm is a mud pit. You know, they're laying pipes and all of this stuff. So we had to make a major shift, bringing stuff off the farm and setting up five minutes away on the, on the beach. We're on the seaside now. 
So, wow, <laughs> very heavy lifting. So now, you know, so I'm, I'm, I really want to lighten up uh, to get an early start on next year. So I, I'm looking at uh, probably this, uh, this equinox, which is around uh, September 21st, uh, to starting my 77-day fast. So realistically, September, October, November, December, you know, this fast should be, should be ready by, by the 1st of January. I should be well off of, of this fast at that time. So I'm, I'm going into next year ready for it, my 77th year on the planet. So the whole plan is that for every year that I live, I add another day of fasting. So for every year that I live, I eat one day less. So who knows? You know, if I make it to 365, I'll be a breatharian. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> and how do you feel after the fast? Or why do you fast also? Well, after the fast, for me, it's like, do I really want to eat? <laughs> You know, it, it seems like during this fast, see, one of the obvious things to me that I see that's going on, it's like I'm like a snake, you know, or a caterpillar, you know, shedding unwanted skin, waste. You know, I see my skin, I see my eyes, I see everything clear up. I see, you know, the, the dead cells falling off, you know, and it's like, Wow, my brain, my my mind. You know, it's it's like I feel like what I'm what I have on top of my shoulders here is a crystal ball. This is a crystal ball. And it seems like for this 75, 76 days, 77 days coming up of just fasting, just liquid, mostly coconut water, 50% coconut water, 25% fruit juice. And most of those are blended with coconut water and 25% vegetable juice blended with coconut water as well. So it's like I'm polishing the crystal ball, the clarity, you know, the, 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 the light, you know, it's like I don't have to try to figure things out. It's like bing, everything is just cl crystal clear for me you know i can see where i am what i'm doing where i'm going you know and i can get there before before i reach <laughs> you know that kind of stuff you know so uh it's an amazing experience you know to be able to pretty much shed weight you know like that and when i look around it's like i remember one year uh i believe this was like probably you know, 68, 69, 70 days of fasting. I was up in Friburgo, Friburgo, up there in in in, uh, Rio. in Spa Brazil, Maria Bonita. Rio de Janeiro, in the mountains at Spa Maria Bonita. I was interned there for like about six weeks, you know, just doing workshops, teaching, and I'm fasting. And I, I, you know, I got into to, to Rio, you know, bang, bang, bang. And then by the time I got up there, my fast started. It was December 1st. And wow, what a journey. I, I did a lot of wheatgrass because, you know, I'm into what my environment shares with me. And Spa Maria Bonita up there, you know, my guy up there that, that takes care of the wheatgrass. I got a wheatgrass lesson that whole, you know, couple of, of months up there and, but I drank more wheatgrass then for that those six weeks than I've ever ever drank before in my entire life, you know. And to see what goes on, you know, with this type of situation, I remember about day forty-three, you know, I I uh, I had a bowel movement, and when I looked in 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 in, in the commode, I am like, where did all this S come from? <laughs> Like that came out of me and I haven't eaten solid food in 43 days? You'd be amazed to see where this density is coming out of your system and you're not putting in any solid food. 
and it's just peeling out, peeling out. And you see the evolution of your, I guess, your, your, your health quest, just watching your excrement. As a matter of fact, I think that year I posted photos of my excrement on Facebook. So you review my Facebook post for about, you know, eight, ten years ago, you're going to see, it's like, and I'm like, oh, man, where did all this S come from? I don't know. So it's an amazing way to really see yourself the way you actually are and to see it come out like this and to be able to, like, uh, just be in the light because the enlightenment really becomes crystal clear. This here, yeah, my crystal ball, I got to polish it now once a year like this. It works for me. Excellent. <laughs> I, I swear to God, I remember seeing that, that, the, those pictures back then. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, when you, when you said it, I was like, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I actually did a 39-day water fast uh, one year ago, and I plan to do another one. People think I'm crazy, but like, it was like getting back to life again. And I, actually, a lot of uh, damage that I done to myself through the first 22 years of my usual life my my modern daily fair life that i had i could see the reversal right like a, a lot of a lot of things got better so i plan to do another 39 day water fest so what are your closing thoughts like we have just three to four minutes to close up so what yeah. are, would would be your suggestions to people at their home, they're watching, they got inspired, what should they do? How do you suggest they... they well, grow? I tell you, uh, get to know thyself. Figure out your plan, my plate. You know, my plate, don't try to fit yourself into my plate or Doug Graham's or Dr. Corazza's plate. Set up your own plate, figure your plate out, you know, based on your activity based on your, your, your wellness uh, report card. Figure out the size of your plate and what should really go on it. But keep it live. Keep it live as fresh as possible and, uh, you know, see what you're made of or what you want to be made of, you know, because what you eat today walks and talks tomorrow. So, guys, don't forget, if you haven't seen our documentary of my 39 day war fast search the channel but finish on yeah well to me this is what it's really all about you know because it took me years to figure my journey out to figure what really works for me and as an educator and having educated thousands of people already and seeing what happens with each individual it is very important you know, that we find what really works for us as an individual. So what I'm sharing with you is my experience and giving you a basic fundamental guidepost for you to tweak and set up the lines for you, where you fit within, within that, you know. But uh, some people, you know, you need a lot of protein if you're, you're a heavy, you know, hard hitter. You know, but you're going to be able to process it effectively. You know, if you're very sedentary, be very careful about the heavy fat and heavy starches. But and if you're into a lot of technology, a lot of computer works and cell phone culture and all of that, make sure you get your, sea, your seaweed, the trace minerals, you know, to counteract the effect of this radiation today. So we have to balance things, you know, and stay in your center. Work with your intuition. And as the body becomes clean and the, the, the eating system evolves, the body is intelligent. It's going to know what it wants, you know. So if you crave for it and you know it's, it's on the clean list, then go ahead and OD on that food, whatever it is. You know, what the body can't use is surely it's going to refuse. It won't stick to the ribs. Not if it's from this menu plan. Nice, nice. Uh, always good to see you, Aris. You are such an inspiration, and it's always good to see you thriving, to see you setting an example for society. 
Uh, I really believe that we, we will be seen one day in the future, maybe 50 years from now, as visionaries for sure. You're, you're doing this for a long, long, long more time than I am. I'm still a kid uh, compared to you, just 17 years out there. But uh, I really hope natural hygiene perspective and preaches and, you know, ideas of like health through health living and to heal the planet by our ancestor lifestyles, like by, by the ancestry lifestyle, uh, uh, fasting and a, a frugivore diet. So you, you have to be congratulated and I hope one day people you uh, uh, recognize your efforts, our efforts of, for natural hygienists to... Yeah, well, I tell work. you, I think they're getting it because they're coming home. They're coming home to self. They, they, their back is up against the wall. A lot of them are sick and tired of being sick, you know, and they're coming home. It's, it's just, it's, it's a one-way street here. You got to keep rising, you know, and uh, again, welcome home. Welcome home to yourself, to your life. Take ownership, take responsibility. You can go as far as being your own doctor. Just get busy and start studying. Know thyself. Blessings, brother. Thank you. See you soon. And guys, stay tuned. Watch all the videos. Learn. That's how you change your mind, your lifestyle. And go to health. See you soon. All right. Bless up.